morning. Welcome back to Mayo Clinic Radio. I'm Dr. Tom Shives. And I'm Tracy McRae. Well, Tracy, earlier this summer, the Mayo Clinic, by the way, just named the number one hospital in the country by a U.S. News and World Report. The Mayo Clinic started the process of moving to a single integrated electronic health record and, and a billing system. We can't forget the billing system. Sounds like a great idea. <laughs> <laughs> well, the new system is called EPIC, and it's, it, that's uh, still questionable. It's called EPIC, and it is already being used at Mayo Clinic health system sites in Wisconsin. Now, health system sites in Minnesota are scheduled to go live in November of this year, followed by Mayo Clinic's Rochester campus in May of 2018 and Mayo Clinic's campuses in Arizona and Florida in October of 2018. You know, it is a big deal with a big price tag. The project is called The Plumber Project as it builds on the legacy of Dr. Henry Plummer, who created the world's first patient-centered health record at Mayo Clinic more than a century ago. And here to discuss the new electronic health record is Dr. Steve Peters. Dr. Peters is a lung specialist at Mayo Clinic, and he is co-chair of The Plumber Project. Welcome to the program, Dr. Peters. It's nice to meet you. Thanks for having me. Dr. Peters, good to have you on the program. So a lung specialist, but I think you've now turned into an IT specialist, haven't you? I mean, you. I, I wish our listeners could see the photo behind you that shows the commands, Epic Command Center, <laughs> where you spend a fair amount of time, but you've got a huge payroll. This is a big deal. That's correct. Thanks uh, for, for having me. The Plumber Project will extend over a couple of years. It's already been in place for a couple of years as we plan this transition. Our main command center on uh, 41st Street in Rochester has as at its peak about 450 people working uh, on the project at any given moment. There are twice that many working on it overall, and that's part of the cost, of course, is the people it takes to to make the transition. We're talking about a billion dollars, right? A billion dollars has been cited as an overall cost. It's somewhat misleading because uh, only a small portion of that goes to technology. The majority of it goes to people, and that's also spread over 10 years. And you might or might not be surprised to know that with our legacy systems, we were already spending $100 million a year or more on all our electronic systems. So this will converge perhaps 250 smaller departmental or disparate systems onto the EPIC system. So in the long run, there can be savings associated with it. We are heard on 160 plus radio stations all across the country. And right now, many of our listeners might be thinking, mm -hmm. who cares what the Mayo Clinic is doing for their billing and records. Why does this make a difference at all to healthcare? The reason it's important for us, and then hopefully relevant to anyone who cares about the Mayo Clinic or anyone who's been a patient or trained here or is interested in our, in our success, is that it is a practice convergence project rather than an information technology project. Over time, as we spread to Arizona and Florida, those centers grew and they developed a different and separate electronic medical record, which occurred for good reasons at the time. In the health system, these were smaller practices and hospitals that we initially absorbed and managed more or less as a holding company. But now there's a strong desire uh, by our leadership to create a single Mayo Clinic experience where we can spread our best practices and do things efficiently. In recent years, there's a lot more things we can do inside of the electronic medical record. For example, give decision support to nurses, pharmacists, and doctors with best practices that have been vetted and well-established. But we had to build those in every system separately. When this project is done, we can put an update into production overnight, and it's everywhere from, Air, from Eau Claire, Wisconsin, to Rochester, Minnesota, to Phoenix, Arizona. So there'll be a lot, uh, a lot to be gained for the practice. It all sounds so good, but everybody's going to have to be trained on this, right? It's not going to be easy. Change. It's <laughs> going to be change. Yeah, the change management and the impact of the change really cannot be overstated. This is an integrated system from end to end that includes the, the appointment scheduling, registration, checking a patient in, recording the blood pressure and heart rate, conducting the examination, creating the documentation, all the workflow in the hospital, everything that occurs, every surgery, every blood transfusion, and then all the billing that goes along with it. So everything everyone does at Mayo Clinic, which 
uh, currently of the 65,000 employees, over 50,000 people will be directly affected by this in everything they do. And it changes uh, sometimes subtly and sometimes pretty dramatically just your typical workflows. How long does it take to learn this? How long does it take most people? How long will it take someone like me? Oh, boy. <laughs> it would take. Uh, the way we're planning the training is the fair amount of self-study. So what we'll ask you to do is look at some short video clips and do some preparation prior to classroom training. There will be typically two half-day classroom training sessions, and that gets you the basic navigation, the basic workflow, and then it takes uh, a few weeks of seeing patients uh, in a typical volume for you to become comfortable uh, and, and with the experience that you'd gain. Let's talk for a second about Dr. Plummer, because not only is this project called the Plummer Project, we are recording this program in the Plummer Building. Mm -hmm. Dr. Plummer is pretty important to the history He's of everywhere. Mayo Clinic. Henry Plummer was one of the first physicians brought on by the Mayo Brothers in the early 20th century, and he was sort of famous uh, polymath and good at many things. He brought a lot of engineering design, uh, and one of his contributions was uh, one of the first organized paper medical records. Prior to his planning, each specialist more or less kept a cardex or a register of the patients they had seen. Oh. And he uh, thought that it would be important to have a patient-centered record, which was a paper record in a folder that could move with the patient around the clinic so that each person in sequence could know what had happened, what had happened before. He also made a great number of medical contributions, but we named this project in his honor for that history. He certainly would be your running partner on this, wouldn't he, well, if he were here today? I think he'd be impressed by how far uh, technology has come, although he was far ahead of his time. I mentioned moving records. He also designed in the earliest versions of the Mayo Building a tube system that could allow the record to move ahead of the patient and get to the next, the next desk or area uh, without being uh, manually handled. In it how did you choose Epic? You know, there are a lot of options out there. How was it that, that you decided Epic would be the best one for Mayo? Well, the selection of the vendor Epic, which is a large company based just outside of Madison, Wisconsin, was a very uh, thorough and balanced uh, vetting with enterprise-wide participation across all Mayo sites. It took uh, many months after the call for proposals and demonstrations by multiple of the leading medical record vendors to come to a consensus that Epic would be the best choice for us to work with. And you've gone live on one site. You've, Wisconsin sites have gone live. How did that go? So the Wisconsin Go Live, it's one region. It's 27 facilities, seven hospitals, and 20 clinics. So it's a pretty big uh, gulp that we took. And it overall went quite well. Technically, it went well. Uh, another challenge for the project was we had uh, over a dozen co-dependent projects, things like laboratory systems and uh, materials management programs that had to go up at the same time. Those all have all gone successfully. There are some, uh, anything of this size has some minor uh, glitches that are technical, more so the workflow that we mentioned before. This is still, now we're over a month into it, and we're still dealing with workflow changes and fine tuning the system so it provides a single Mayo Clinic experience but still allows a small community practice, a small critical access hospital, or a larger hospital like Eau Claire and La Crosse to function well. You know, it all sounds so exciting, and, and you know, it, it's going to be wonderful once we all learn uh, how to do it, <laughs> and I hope we all learn. The Electronic Health Record, the Plumber Project, a Mayo Clinic Lung Specialist and Co-Director of the Plumber Project, Steve Peters. Dr. Steve Peters, thanks so much for being with us. Thank you.